Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. You know, we would love to hear from you. So send us an email with your question or your comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today we have some beautiful young ladies to bring to you. We have Holly Wright, who is the director of Casa Guadalupe and Sister Anastasia Chiara Luce. And both these beautiful ladies are with CasaGuadalupe.net. And they're going to tell us the fabulous story of yeah. their lives and what this beautiful ministry is doing and how needed it is. As God always yeah. does, he raises up well, holy sister, men and sister women Anastasia of God. was at Casa Guadalupe. She's not there anymore, though. She's moved on through. Yes. Uh, so Holly is still there. Um, but she's with Sisters of Life now. Yes. And so it's a house of discernment, mm -hmm. vocations for, for women. And today's the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yes. And so how interesting and wonderful that we would have Casa Guadalupe, this house of discernment dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so uh, they're going to unpack why. Mm -hmm. why, is, why did they take that name? Uh, but thinking of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that apparition to Juan Diego, I think it's 1530 or 1531, and she appears to this convert mm -hmm. to Christianity, to Catholicism, and uh, reveals herself, you know, I'm, I'm your mother, <laughs> you know, to him, and uh, I want a temple built for me in Tepeyac on, yeah. on the hill there. Uh, so he beseeches the bishop to do that, bishop's saying, I need some proof, you know, you're seeing this lady. And of course, we know the story of where she appears again and, and he directed some very special flowers in the wintertime, and so he takes these flowers to bring back to the bishop as a sign, and then opens up his tilma, yes. and the flowers fall out. You shouldn't have those flowers this time of year. And then also the image mm. of Our Lady yes. of Guadalupe is there imprinted upon his, his tilma. Um, and we need to remember that that society at that time, that Aztec society, for a variety of reasons, but a wrong understanding about God and cosmology of the universe, that they believed human sacrifice. Yes was the way to appease evil. So they were sacrificing children, sacrificing uh, other people because they wanted to feed this mm -hmm. demonic so-called God with blood and appease him. Mm -hmm. But when Our Lady appeared, this pregnant woman, and I think it's the only apparition where Mary appears pregnant, um, the radical change in the Aztec society. Yes. Because when, when, when the woman's there, when Mary shows up, Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it elevates uh, womanhood elevates the lady and millions, I think it's like nine million Aztec people converted, converted yes. to mm -hmm. Catholicism in a very short period of time. And to this present day, beautiful things are happening there. When people go there for a pilgrimage, we had a former abortionist who came to our, uh, who was on our show, who yeah. went there, had the Blessed Mother really, he believes, really speak to him to stop doing what he was doing and, and converts yeah. and becomes a great doctor. Yeah, so that that, that image of Our Lady Guadalupe is powerful in and yes. of itself to, to change lives and hearts. So we're going to be speaking with uh, uh, Holly with Casa Guadalupe and Sister Anastasia. It's casaguadalupe.net. And we pray for the presence of Our Lady as never before mm. to be made manifest in the United States of America throughout all the Americas. She, I think she's the patroness of the Americas, patroness of the pro-life movement, that her son would be received and that a new culture of life would breathe through the Americas and throughout the world. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and today I bring to you Holly Wright, who is the director of Casa Guadalupe, and Sister Anastasia Chiara Luce. She was 
discerning at Casa Guadalupe. She discerns so well that now she's the sister of life. And you can go to their website, casaguadalupe.net. Well, beautiful ladies, welcome on this beautiful celebrating day. We're so happy to have you. Now, Holly, first, you're the director. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born and raised, and then how you got involved with Casa Guadalupe. Okay, thank you, Jane. We're so happy to be here. I'm originally actually from Orange County, California, and uh, raised out there, a uh, beautiful Catholic family, and very, very blessed. And I came out to New Jersey, of all places, that God called me to New Jersey. Um, and through a series of events, um, ended up with this beautiful ministry. So what actually was a very difficult time in my life, I had been married in California and uh, come out here with my husband at the time. And then after several years, he didn't want to be married or didn't feel we were married anymore and uh, applied for an annulment. And it was during that very difficult time, that dark time, that I was realizing I need to re-discern my vocation again and wasn't my plan. And somehow during that time, more and more other young women were coming to do the same thing. And they were coming to my apartment. I had a couple of girls who were living together, praying, serving with the friars, the Franciscan friars, the renewal. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it was more and more girls. We had, I remember nine girls spending the night. We already had four and they said, we want to live here. Wow. We want to live with you. And I said, you can't live here. There's only two bedrooms here. We have yeah. four girls. And I remember one person asked me, I would like to join your community. And I said, I don't have a community. I'm trying to figure out my life right now. And uh, someone tried to make a donation. They wrote out, they said, oh, because we had named this apartment that we lived in, Casa Guadalupe, the other mm -hmm. apartments I was in, we had the Francis and the Claire, and yeah. you know, it's just named after yeah. saints. And of mm -hmm. course, I love Our Lady of Guadalupe. And it was on her feast day that we, close to that, we had moved in and we celebrated. And so we said, let's call it Casa Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. But Our Lady had different plans. She knew what she was uh, doing and it was her house. And basically, the start of the house, when these girls were coming, I went with one of the girls to Father Agostino Torres, who is our, our spiritual director of the house. Mm -hmm. And I said, what does this mean? I'm trying to figure out the Lord's yeah. will. I don't understand. And he asked, well, what all these girls have in common? It was pro-life ministry. We work with Corazón Puro, serving the friars, and discerning vocation, praying together, and living in community. And he said, well, if this is from the Lord, then he'll do it. It's his plan, so you don't have to do anything. Don't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, okay, that was a big relief. It's sure. not my job. <laughs> and that night, two girls came up to myself and, and this other uh, young woman. And one said, oh, I, my, my dad is going to buy me a house in this area, but I'm looking for roommates that want to pray and discern their vocation together. Where am I going to find them? She was crying. Mm -hmm. And I said, did you talk to Father? And she said, no, why? I said, nothing. And then the, uh, the other young woman said, well, my priest at my parish has a convent and it's closed down and people want to rent it out, but he wants to give it to a group of women who are discerning their vocation together. So right away we knew God is doing something. And it turned out uh, a little after that, Bishop of Patterson Diocese, Bishop Sartelli, who's just a wonderful bishop, we're so blessed. But he pulled Father Agostino aside at a meeting and said, you know, it's been a, a prayer of mine to have a group of women praying and discerning together in my diocese. And Father said, well, I might know some. Mm -hmm. And they said, great, they can move in tomorrow, yes, you know. Yes. And then two weeks later, we were all moved in. And Father said, you need to start a 501c3 organization. Right. And you're in charge. And I, oh, no. <laughs> I felt, <laughs> so I'm so just trying to discern. Oh, no. uh, I felt like a baby was uh, dropped at the doorstep. But it was, if I asked for God to show me what to do, it, he just did everything, you know, mm -hmm. it was really Our Lady's yeah. plan. Beautiful. And it's a great blessing. It is. Sister, tell us about yourself, your history, your background, yes. how you wound up in uh, Casa Guadalupe. So I grew up in New York City. And as you know, New York City is very distracting, very loud. And I knew that the Lord um, had placed in my heart just a desire to grow closer to Him, you know. I wasn't sure what that looked like, you know. I did have the desire for marriage, you know, and that's a, such a healthy desire, especially if you're discerning um, for children. But 
I, I didn't realize that it was basically the tip of, of the iceberg, you know, uh -huh. that there was something so much more profound that the Lord had to show, show me. But I was involved um, with Corazón Puro a little bit too, so I, I knew some of the girls. And at the time, they had a group um, called Vida Consecrada, which was basically young women that would get together and they would study the document, you know, Vida Consecrada, what it is. And, you know, a friar probably would teach it sometimes and we'd get together monthly. And, and I remember hearing about this group and um, I had discerned a little bit and I was kind of like going to the Sisters of Life retreats on the young women's retreats, not mm -hmm. the discernment retreats, mm -hmm. you know, kind of just scoping it out just to see. And, and I attended a retreat and I, and I knew that I just had to continue um, learning more what religious life really is through this document. So I began going to the groups, you know, to just to, to meet at one, one of them. It was a meeting at, at one of the fri friaries and, and I went in and it's all these women going in, you know, Holly's there as well. And we're going to the chapel, Father Lucino's giving a conference and I see in the corner of my eye, there's like a friar with his hood up, you know, <laughs> bare feet, like on the floor. And I said, oh my gosh, where am I? This is so crazy. I can't believe five years ago, I never thought I'd step into a friar. And um, just the, the radicalness of that, you know, of their way of life and seeing that um, um, even to see like that men could do this too and that women also have a place, you know, within the church that they could also live a way of life of radicalness and, and deep love of the Eucharist and deep love of our Lord um, in a spousal way mm -hmm. and that to be a mother, you know, spiritually. So um, it was really a blessing to come to know Casa through that group. and. Um, before the house was officially Casa Guadalupe, I know, like like Holly was saying, there was the discernment part of just like you know what is God really asking. I, I remember speaking to Father Gustino and and he said, you know, what do you think? I was one of the women that's like, you know, I think God may be like you know, and just like just stirring something in my heart. And he said, you know, what do you think about a house where women um, can live together, pray together, still work in the world, but have a, a life of community? Would you? Would you be interested? And I said, Father, in a heartbeat, like, I, I need this. I knew it um, in order to discern further what, what God had in store for me. So um, he said, well, keep it in prayer. Nothing is official yet, but we'll see what the Lord has. And um, I think the house opened back in 2011 in April. And I, I visited during that year in December, especially visited. And then January of 2012, um, I entered the Casa Guadalupe to, to see what it is that the Lord was really asking of me. So. And how long did you stay there? So I was there for about two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. So. And then what kind of work did you do while you were there? What did you do? Yes. Yeah, so we have a, there was an apostolate at the house, mm -hmm. which was to serve um, the poor with the friars, and then Corazón Puro, which is a pro-life ministry. Mm -hmm. So I was very much involved with that. Um, but outside of that, I had to work. I worked at a local parish, Immaculate Conception, in New Jersey wonderful, wonderful staff and, and great atmosphere. And there was actually um, an uh, abortion clinic really close by to mm -hmm. this um, to this church. And so um, I really felt called to be at this location. And they, I applied for a job and I was doing parish, um, parish life associate. So uh, all, you know, everything from breakfast to Santa to youth ministry to, you know, you wear many caps, you know, and so, but I think a lot of it was, um, you know, the 40 days for life during that time um, and just leading. I know through Casa Guadalupe and the fires, we had um, even a Eucharistic process, procession from mm. the church to the abortion clinic mm. and just praying outside and, and really feeling, feeling called, um, yeah, to, to really stand up for life. And so, yeah, Casa Guadalupe really helped me foster that even more, yeah. So Casa Guadalupe now is under the authority of the diocese in Patterson? So. Well, it's the Diocese of Patterson, the building, and okay. uh, but Bishop Saratelli has sort of given authority to Father Agostino, so he's our okay. spiritual director, priest protector of the house. Uh, approximately how many women at any time are in the house? Typically we'll have about seven, the most we've had is nine, it's okay. a three-bedroom house, so it's very small, and it's intentionally kind of cramped. You sort of learn communication skills when you have three roommates and two bathrooms for seven girls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, over the past seven years, we've had uh, a little over 40 women go through the house. And they're being drawn to this place, you know, I'm thinking they're being drawn because they're, they're seeing some degree of light, radical living. Um, wanting to come out from the world, but still, you know, be in the world, but not of the world. Community, 
I mean, how much mm -hmm. is community a part mm -hmm. of the yearning of, you know, like to be a part? Um, so what, what is drawing them and then what, there's a variety of women there. Some might be thinking about going on to the consecrated life. Some are just saying, what's my vocation in life? Or maybe it's marriage. Tell us more about mm -hmm. what is it drawing them in and, and the different types of women that are there in terms of the focus. It is, it's amazing that women are coming from all over the world. There's, we've had a girl from Peru, we've had uh, Germany, and I'm having a girl from Switzerland come in April, but then also just all over the United States. And you're absolutely right, Jim, community is a big yeah. call. In a, in a society where the family's breaking down, some of our girls that are coming, they've never sat down and had a meal together mm -hmm. before. So just that very aspect of us yeah. being intentionally living a community life is very, very different and very healing and very necessary. Uh, some of them are realizing God's calling me to something deeper. Father Agostino travels the world as a missionary, and so a lot of times he's meeting with young women, and there just aren't that many discernment mm -hmm. houses for women. So sometimes we might be the only Google search that comes up, and so they're finding us that way. But coming and, and longing to have a structure of prayer, because a lot of times we want to, to pray, in, but we're sort of saving it for the yeah. end of the day. So when we're praying in community, we follow the prayer schedule that the Franciscan friars have. And so we're doing the five offices and we're uh, daily mass and holy hour. And that's punctuated by work and balancing work and then service to the poor with the friars and with Corazón Puro. And I think just having kind of that set life and that cadence, that structure that's there can help us to to rest in the Lord during those times of prayer. We have we work part time. We have Fridays as a day of prayer and silence in the house. We take terms of the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. And so it's a place that's carved out. This is for your discernment. And in that service to the poor, too, is, is really part of that discernment. Because sometimes we're in the chapel praying. We might not hear the answer, but it might be the poor person that we're mm -hmm. serving that the Lord just speaks very powerfully through. So you have, you have your own chapel. We do. We're do you very, have a tabernacle blessed. there? We do. Oh, thank God. Oh, it's okay. an incredible mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. That was one of my signs yeah. when I felt like this can't possibly be what, be what yeah. God wants. I said, if this is really from you, then you'll give us a tabernacle with the Blessed Sacrament wow. there. And I thought, He'll, there's no way that that's ever going to happen. But Bishop Saratelli, of course, really trusts the friars. And um, there's a profound reverence that we have in the, in the house. We actually will wear skirts or dresses only into the chapel. Mm -hmm. We don't want to treat it like any other room right. of the house. And so there's certain reverence. We have a local parish nearby where we'll go to Mass mm -hmm. regularly, but mm -hmm. once a month, Father will come and celebrate Mass for Beautiful. us, which is incredible. And privilege. then what about the cooking and the cleaning? And do you have a house mother or everyone shares details like a real family? Well, I guess I'm the house mother, but <laughs> we do share right, with the cooking in the house. I remember, yeah, we definitely had like a schedule. I think when I, when I used to live there before being a sister, we had definitely cooking time, cleaning time, chores changed every yes. week. And um, yeah, I recall like there was a team cooking, like it was like you and another person. And for example, I'm Hispanic and my, my team member was like Asian and like, what are we gonna cook today, yeah. you know? <laughs> Let's go American, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> what can we do? So it was um, very, uh, it's so beautiful because it's such a cultural experience. And also just to know your sister, you know, mm -hmm. like the one you live with and just know like, okay, what does she like? You know, what can we do together? And, mm. and you learn a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of formative experiences, especially in the beginning. And, and you come to know that it's not just about you, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, especially in discernment, you know, it could be just, oh, it's just, you know, you think it's just you. But I think it's Mother Teresa, you know, joy, Jesus, others, and you, mm -hmm. you know, joy. And, mm -hmm. and that is the radicalness of self-gift, you know, when you learn that living in community, um, you're serving the other, and in that you're serving our Lord, mm -hmm. and there's something that after you seek, you know, first the kingdom, then you'll know what, what God has in store. So I was really grateful for, for that. There's so many funny stories, but I was really grateful for that experience of mm -hmm. just um, yeah. sharing in community there. Well, yeah. thank you for laying the groundwork. This is a beautiful, beautiful work. And I guess you know your works by their fruit. Mm -hmm. and so here's mm -hmm. the fruit here, mm -hmm. your holy oh, yeah, life God. and women that are coming on through that are choosing marriage or being single and being consecrated to the Lord or going yeah. into the religious life. We'll share more on Friday. We're looking forward to it so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's casaguadalupe.net. It may be for you, casaguadalupe.net, or you just might be able to learn some lessons through this beautiful house of the sermon. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away.
Father, wonderful to be with you. Your thoughts yes. about the show today. You know, I love that advice of Father Augustino to Holly, that if it's of God, it's going to happen. Right. Right? Right. You don't have to be pushing. You don't have to be trying to make something happen. And somehow you see that again and again, how people have a sense that God is calling them to do something and the doors just kind of yeah. open on their own. So yeah. certainly that happened with Mother Angelica. That's right. She just kept following and sometimes she would say, well, you'd see that a door closes. Well, this is not God's will. Mm -hmm. But then others open wide mm -hmm. and you just have to have the courage to step forward. Right. So yeah. thanks, right. thanks be to God and for that. And those that have that faith, that childlike and mature faith to say, I have this vision here. If it's of the Lord, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I believe it's going to happen. God will bring it to pass if it's in Him. And so you get this house of discernment. And who is it attracting? It's attracting women that are asking the same question. Yeah. Lord, do you want me to be in a religious life? Do you want me to be a sister? Um, married life? Mm -hmm. Maybe they come from families, like they said, that were broken. Right. And is this of you? Isn't it of you? Which way should I go? What's going on? And to have a place that's birthed in that vision. Right. And so that you can ask the same question that the person asked, or those people who founded this place, to have that atmosphere, that security is critical. You know, radical individualism doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Isolation doesn't work. And our culture is showing that. People turning to addictions and these sorts of things. Community, mm -hmm. being united with others being one in the Lord. You know, one of the things of having a regularity in prayer, what it does, and as a religious I can say this, you become disposed at those times to open yourself to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like on a natural level, we get hungry at noon. You know, we're used yeah. to eating at that time. And it's the same thing in prayer. If we have set times in prayer, a regularity in prayer, it's like your whole being kind yes. of becomes disposed to mm -hmm. that, more open mm -hmm. to it. It's so in tune with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. critical. Well, Father, would you uh, lead us in a prayer, and then we're going to make a brief announcement. Sure. Father, we thank you for this new initiative, which is meeting a real need. And we pray the light of your Holy Spirit upon this Casa Guadalupe, that it may benefit many young women in helping to find your mission and plan in their lives. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, today, on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, EWTN is carrying the Mass in honor of Our Lady of Guadalupe from the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in Los Angeles. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time and 5.30 p.m. Central Time. And at home at Jim and Joy, we'll be back on Friday at our regular time at 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 p.m. Central. Remember, you are always at home with Jim and Joy. Keep it on EWTN and have a blessed day.